a shake-up in the pensions industry seems to be imminent with new capital requirements being offered by the regulators. Joining me in the studio to take a look at what to expect is the um, president of the Pension Operators Association of Nigeria, Dave Oduano. Thank you so much, Dave, for joining us on the show today. Thank you. Well, I remember in 2004 when the whole reform started, it seemed like the next big opportunity, but I'm not sure it has played out that well for everyone. We've seen quite a few number of players, about 24 in all, but only a handful can really be said to be really um, doing very well. And now we now have this new requirement for capital from 150 million to 1 billion naira. What should we expect? What are your expectations for how um, um, players will be able to comply with these requirements? Uh, thank you. Um, well, if you remember, the 150 million back then was set with reference to the insurance capital of insurance companies, which was 150 million. And a lot has happened. You're, you're right in a sense because um, when the industry started, we expected to see um, enrollment figures that you know were our pro initial projections were very optimistic. Mm. We expected by now we have about 10 million subscribers, but we only have about 5 million subscribers, and that is because the, the economy is largely informal. It's also a very young population, and the uh, unemployment rate is very high. Mm. So, and the, a lot of the big companies have complied. So, in a sense, we have reached some sort of very early, very early maturity, if you want to use that word, in the former in the former sector. Mm. And the next big thing is the former sector. However, mm. the business, as we've seen, it requires significant capital beyond what was initially thought. Mm. Uh, pension funds operators are required to have branches all over the federation and these branches will have to link up you know so there's a lot of money to be spent on it um uh, you know there are huge infrastructure deficit in the country so every branch you have need to have a generator mm. uh, but more importantly we are competing in the same markets with banks for for skills and for ma managerial talents mm. and you know this these skills are being built up particularly in the investment area right. so you find that working capital requirement has gone up and the reaction of the regulator is to increase the share capital you mm. know so that to position the pension funds to mm. enter the next field which is where the real competition really begins mm. where contributors are allowed to switch from one pension fund operator to the other no. and just to correct something um even though the capital required was 150 a lot of players had contributed or had paid up shared capital of between 500 and 1 billion so Already. we expect that the amount of money required by the more um more sizable players will not be that significant mm. but uh, like you mentioned for this more sizable players but for the for those that are not as sizable if i use that term there obviously will be consolidation Yes, we expect consolidation. There are 24 players in the market. It's fragmented. I mean, the, the biggest player controls about 30% of the market. The next 10 you know, players, I would say the top 10 players control about 88% of the market. So there and you if go. you add another two. So in a sense, there are only about, if you want to, between 12 and 15 players who I suspect will be able to scale through the recapitalization. Having said that, pensions is not like banking or insurance. Remember that the funds are held with the custodian. So we need to very quickly correct the impression. Nothing is going to happen to anybody's pension account. Mm. What happens is that the players that would not be able to, to meet the new minimum requirement, they have about 18 months to comply. They will either decide to sell their assets under management, where it's transferred to another you know, pension fund manager to manage, and mm. then they will exit the industry. Mm. So it's it's a seamless. We're going to see a seamless consolidation. I suspect will be, will reduce from 24 to maybe anything between 12 and 15 players. And the, the compliance deadline is. And the compliance deadline. The first compliance deadline is 30 June 2012. However, because audits are done at the end of the year, you will then have till December 2012 to present your audited account that, ref that reflects the new capital. So in a sense, mm. they have 18 months to comply, which I think is a fairly you know, a reasonably long enough time for, um, you know, any, any, any business that really wants to continue in the industry to, 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 to comply. And when I started, I talked about the fact that the industry has somewhat disappointed the operators. But I think even for the broader capital market, because we've seen the NSC struggle recently over the last one or two years, and there's a sense that the PFAs, the pension fund managers, are really the ones that should be providing the liquidity to, to support demand, which would perhaps give us a more sustained market rally. But we haven't seen that, obviously. It's more of the internationals that are supporting the market. And whenever they pull back, we see the market 
come down, like we've seen recently. Um, what are your exp what are your thoughts on how the PFAs can be more aggressive in terms of investing into the equity space? Because one of the restrictions that they have, obviously, is the um, investment requirements and guidelines with regards to how much they can put in equities and fixed income. Well, I mean, PFAs really, I mean, truly speaking, don't play that role. However, PFAs, because they are long-term investors, provide our support indirectly. Now, if you look at the numbers, the stock market is $50 billion in market cap. The PFAs have a total industry AUM, assets under management of $13 billion. Now, two and a half, 25 percent of that is 3.75 .7, billion dollars. Yeah. Um, even if you invested the whole of the two and a half, uh, 25 percent in, in the stock market, that will still not be enough to support the market. Remember that PFAs don't trade. I think it's an important distinction. PFAs, you know, essentially make bets in stocks that they believe have long-term fundamentals because they are long-term investors. Um, however, having said that. Because of the nature of um, the system we run here, we publish our unit prices every day. And you know this is a new scheme. And people often right. react negatively when they see a reduction okay. in their unit price. So PFAs, therefore, always retreat to the safety of bonds when the market right. begins to look So safe. unfortunately, I have to interject. Um, we cannot take it much further. But thank you so much for your thoughts. We've been speaking to David Duano, giving us his thoughts on the Nigerian pension industry and the shakeup that is expected going forward.